Hi guys. So we've got some really, really awesome concepts to go over and I'm going to try to put it together as best I can. So be patient with me. Here we go. At the Big Bang. <clears throat> no. At, I finally understand what the event horizon is. The event horizon is the place of its absolute zero and singularity. So you would think that zero and singularity would be two different opposing things. One is zero, one is one, single, singularity. It turns out that absolute zero and singularity are the same thing. Now this is what sits at the gaping opening of a black hole. Okay, it's the event horizon. So this somehow is going to relate to our evolution of the human being. What we do is we sit at the zero, at the gaping mouth of the black hole at the event horizon horizon at the singularity. Okay. Um, that point is our origin. It's our beginning. And then we get sucked into the black hole. Now, remember in contrary to what science says about the black hole, where gravity pulls everything in, we are seeing the black hole from the reversal of time because we are now in the white hole. So we are seeing the black hole backwards in time. And therefore, the black hole backwards in time shoots everything out. It's the big bang. Okay, let's compare that scenario to the evolution of the human being. First, you guys, we sit at absolute zero. What that is, is oblivion. It's oblivion. So outer darkness and what it is, it's like la la land. If you can picture the eye of the fairy that we've drawn on this channel, it is a stupor. You know how the eye is glazed over and it's dazed and confused. What that stupor is, you guys, is a complete separation from God. Okay? So we're passing the event horizon from oblivion into the Big Bang. Now you have to remember time is kind of sketchy here. So we can't really separate the two because at the opening of the black hole, um, time and space are one. It's one moment. It's, it's singularity is what they call it. Okay. So our original state is the state of oblivion. And what that translates to is Dazed and confused, a stupor, it's like an intoxicated innocence, an intoxicated innocence. And this is what that means. We became separate from everything, okay? Separate from source. It's our separation from source. So what we maintain is our innocence, that kind of innocent, young, childlike essence, attitude, aspect that you need to be able to enter heaven, right? You need the innocence of a child. It's innocence, but it's also oblivion. It's ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. So what... When we first originally crossed the event horizon at that funny space, we are definitely still in the present moment. 
we lived in the garden. Now remember, the garden is supposed to be the, that perfect place of bliss, right? At first, it's oblivious bliss. And the, it's innocence. It's without knowledge. Okay, we haven't eaten of the fruit yet. And we have a problem. We have just separated and lost all memory. We cannot remember what we just burst out of, what we just crossed into. We have no memory of being the one, the whole, the united, the source, God, the light. We have no memory of that. And living in the present moment, we still are because there is no time space here, you guys. There is no time space here. And so we were continually in the garden, living in the present moment. It's like we got that one aspect right. But living in the present moment means we had no memory. We had lost all remembrance of where we came from. Guess what happens? Everything in the library does not exist. There are four words that I love. I learned this so many years ago, and I finally understand what it means. There are four words that are connected in the human language, and it's through many different languages. It's memory, record, witness, and martyr. And now I can finally put these together in a story for you. When we lost our memory, we also lost our authority. Our authority was God. It is our conscience. We lost our conscience. This is consciousness, right? And so you are in oblivion rather than being aware. You lost the I am, the conscious awareness of I am. It's your memory. You lost it. You lost your authority. Author. The author is the one who records. Okay? So we lost our memory. We lost the ability to record where in our memory banks, which is the Akashic records, which is our conscience, which is our DNA. It's the annals, the libraries in heaven. There was nothing. It was all wiped. You know, I'm remembering a word that galactic mother said, a past will be wiped, a memory will be wiped. Yay. Here it is. Here's the revelation of that. Okay, we lost our author. The author is the one who records the authority, our authority. And our authority is our conscience. Okay, so the witness, guys. The witness is the I. It's the I am. It's the eyeball. It's the individual. We, we had no character. We were in complete oblivion, ignorant bliss. No character. We also lost the martyr. Because in the garden, in the beginning, we, without taking the knowledge of the tree, we would not have died. God said, ye shall surely die if you take of the tree of knowledge. At this point, we have not. We are in ignorant bliss, oblivion. We don't have the martyr. We don't have death. We need all of these things. We need the witness. We need the recorder. 
We need the memory and we need the martyr. Okay, without these things, this is what happens to us. We walk around drunken, dazed in the garden, living in the present moment. It means we have no past. We have no record of what we did five minutes ago. Do you know what this is? (laughs) This is the story, I believe, the legend, the myth of Lemuria. I believe they say that those people had did not have the ability to remember. This is this is what this is. Okay. So if 10 minutes ago you walked through the garden and you're in ignorant bliss and you are living in the present moment and you are enjoying everything to the fullest, but you can do something and cause harm to another living being and because you can't record this in your memory banks, 10 minutes later, you have forgotten what your action just caused. It caused pain for a moment. It caused suffering for a moment. And you cannot record that. And neither can the person that you affected, that you caused an effect to happen to. There is no cause and no effect when you are in oblivion. There's no purpose, no cause, no reason. No reason, no cause, no effect. These words are so beautiful. Yay. Because these are all related. Reason, cause, and effect. You can't reason. Therefore, you can't cause and effect because you can't record, you can't learn, you can't teach. You can't have a cause or an effect when 20 seconds later you forget. You will keep repeating the same cycle. And what do you do? You sit still. This is evolution. You sit still. You sit perpetually in the present moment. You sit perpetually with time standing still. Time standing still means you cannot grow. You cannot move. You cannot evolve. You cannot turn. You cannot. You are perpetually. Because you can't learn a lesson, because you can't record it and put it in your memory bank and put it in the Akashic Records, put it in your DNA or put it in the book, put it in the conscience, you are literally always without consciousness. Okay. You have no reason. You have no cause and you have no effect. It's as if your action produced no effect. Because you didn't learn that it did. And so when you accidentally hit somebody with a coconut over the top of the head and they died, you don't learn a lesson not to do that again because it had no effect on you. No effect is also no affect. Okay, guys, do you know what affect is? It's attitude, it's countenance, it's your face, it's your expression. And why this is so important yet escapes me, except that it is written in the second verse of the Bible, God moved upon the face of of the deep, the face of the waters, the face of the deep, the face he moved on. So this is so important. The face, your affect. What is your affect if you are in oblivion? It's always one state. It's oblivious bliss. Now you cannot know the harm that you caused the pain, the suffering, because you are always in bliss. Can't learn. 
can't grow, can't evolve, can't move. You are stuck in perpetual idiocy, ignorance, illiterate, without the ability to write, record, and read other affects. To see a face that goes, ouch, you forget. You forget all about it. You are in ignorant bliss, okay? This is the innocence that was at the beginning in the garden. It was meant to be the garden of paradise, and it turned into the garden of hell. Oblivion. Oblivion is what it actually was. And it's because we couldn't learn our lessons, and so we kept walking around causing harm, not remembering, not recording, no authority, no author to write. Why no authority? Because you had just separated from God, and you had no conscience. Because your conscience is written in your heart and in your mind, there was nobody to author the pages, to record what we witnessed. Okay. In comes, guys, what this is going to be likened to is absolute zero. It's neutral, neuter, neutral. So if you are in bliss, but you can't experience the pain, bliss is neutral. It's complete ignorance. It's just neutrality because there is no other end of the spectrum. So this is a neutron. Neutral. Complete neutrality absolute zero, not one and not negative one. Neutrality. Okay. Guess what comes in? Think of the single cell amoeba or whatever was the creature that was first come out of the primordial soup of evolution. A a single cell amoeba, something like that. What's the first thing that happens to that single cell? It grows a tail. It grows a tail. The tail is the Y chromosome. Think of the Y. So if neutrality is this, the black hole, the cone, the V shape, right? Now we grow a tail. The Y chromosome, because this is all about DNA too, you guys is the masculine properties. What does the tail give you? Propel. Compel. Propeller. Drive. Motor. Drive. A reason. A purpose a cause. And what the propeller does, the tail, it starts to write a story, T-A-L-E, T-A-L-E. It starts to be able to write very sketchily though, okay? So the propeller, the tail, propels you all of a sudden where before you were perpetually stuck in the present moment. The masculine tail is time. If you can start to move, you start to record time. Time is intricately entwined with distance. So now that you have a tail, there starts to be a linear time. Okay, there starts to be a drive, which is a purpose which is a a must. I must do this. I must do that. I love these words. I love these words. Okay. 
Unfortunately, with that drive, there comes a lust, a lust. And it's all of the masculine type energies that we have identified. It's procreation, it's sport, it's game, it's violence, it's it's drive. It's a countenance now that is red-faced because you are efforting, effort, drive, motor. The word literally compel and propel, the root idea here is pulse. You just gained a pulse and the pulse is about the blood and the blood is red. A red countenance because you're efforting, you're angry, you're violent, you're lusting, you're striving to move and striving to survive is the angry-faced devil. Demons. That's your first. That's your first opposite state of bliss. You finally experience the opposite of bliss. Pain, suffering, demons, in hell. (laughs) This is what happened when we grew the tail. We started to grow the tail. Now, why? Okay, it's because you can't understand the language. You are starting to have words. You're starting now with time. Now, all of a sudden, you can start to remember. Time has propelled you into the linear. And now you know there is a memory in my past where before in the present moment, you sat perpetually in the present moment. Stasis, stagnant, still, unmoving, ungrowing, unevolving. Finally, with time, you get to say, I remember what happened in my past. You are gaining memory. You are gaining a record. You are gaining a consciousness. You are growing a consciousness. It's the Akashic record, which is the collective consciousness. You're starting to put books in the library, and yet you still can't quite put it together. Okay? Because there's a certain drive and a certain purpose in a certain pulse, and it, it's like um, marching to the beat of your own drum. Marching to the beat of your own drum is what the Spirit is saying. It's still individually, okay? So it's not like you've, you know what I think? It's not like you've tapped into the collective consciousness yet. You are, you're still subconscious, subconscious type. Okay. Not quite, not quite there. What you need guys, you are starting to rationalize with the brain. It's reason. You are starting to gain reason, to gain cause, to gain effect or affect. Face, attitude, realizing that you have an effect on others. Okay? It's like you're starting to become aware. Starting to become aware. In the previous state, you were completely inert, inertia, inertia. That's what happens at the event horizon, at the singularity, at the absolute zero. Absolute zero means inertia. It's a concept where science believes that there is no motion, no movement at all. And God, source energy, has to move. That's what the definition of energy is. It's moving. It's always moving. It's force. It's force. It is drive, okay? Now, inertia means without skill, lack of skill, at a state of rest. 
unskillful, lacking art. This is our first state, lacking art. What is art? It's existence. I am, thou art. Okay? You have no skill. You have no existence. You have no conscience. You have no record. You have no memory. You have no drive. Okay, we move to the second state and we get drive. Drive is I must. I must. What is must? Must is moat. It is a verb in ancient language. The root of the word must is the word moat. M-O-T-E. Okay. What did Jesus say? You say I have a speck in my eye, yet you don't recognize the moat in your own eye. The must is the moat. A moat is a cloud over the eyeball. So in the original eye, in the original witness, um, we're just too oblivious, okay? In the second state of evolution, man Ha, ha, now has some kind of purpose, some kind of drive, some kind of cause and effect, some kind of record, and some kind of conscience, okay? But he's got a moat over his eye. It's a cataract. It's a cloud. What it does is it clouds the sky, where in the first state, it was sunny skies. We just didn't know any better. Everything was sunny, even our ability or inability to recognize cause and effect. Okay? It was just crazy. Okay? This causes clouds over the eyeball. So that you're still missing something. And what that something is going to be is the X. Now, luckily, it's building a storm cloud. It's the angry face. And it's building a cloud over the eye. You need that because eventually it will rain and clear everything up. Okay? Okay. The next state of being is the X, which is the X chromosome, which is the X marks the spot. It's like you are obliterating all of the dust clouds, putting an X over the spots, the spot that clouded your vision. You're Xing that out. You're deleting it. It's the X. The X is the martyr. She, the X chromosome, which represents the female, is the one who died. She did not reveal herself. She did not come to life while, right, she was in submission while the Y was ruling our existence, the masculine, the patriarch, and all of those aspects, the rational, calculating, thinking brain. It starts to count, but it's in error, that that masculine brain. Now in comes the female. Okay. She is, what is an X? It literally, this is in the dictionary. It's for people who were um, illiterate and could not read or write. X literally meant signature. Okay. She's the one who, who died in this system. She allowed, it, it was allowed to be submissive, the feminine aspects. She was the ability then to die. She comes in. We have to be able to die. We're in the garden. We can't. She is wisdom. And Proverbs, beautiful Proverbs 7, talks about wisdom as the she. Okay? Um, She comes in and she is the signature. She is the ability to understand the writing, 
to understand what's been recorded, to connect the dots, the motes, the specks in the eyeball that clouded the eye, the dust in the eye, the spots over the eye. She is the one who's able to trace. She's the one who delineates, who draws, who connects the dots. Jesus drew a line in the sand. He was bringing in the compassion, the refreshing, cooling waters. This is literally the cycle of life. She was the whole, it's a play on words, H, no, W-H-O-L-E, that was able to receive the tail tail, T-A-L-E, as well as T-A-I-L, the Y chromosome. She's the whole that was able to receive the tail. Okay. She's making everything whole. Now, how does she do this? It's because whole is the word heal, is the word hell. It's death that can heal. It's death that heals you. Why? Because you guys, in death is where the rotting occurs, where the breaking down occurs, where the decay occurs. It fertilizes the soil for new growth. It fertilizes the soil for new growth. It's the one that traces Okay, trace, you guys, is related to the word outline, is related to the word sketch, is related to the word ghost, phantom. It's a trace, but it's also a tract, T-R-A-C-T. It's like it's the path, okay? Now, she comes in, who is she okay so guys at absolute zero let me give you the second part of our story here okay x marks the spot first of all she's the whole thing she's not only the y that only had one tail i'm doing an upside down y she she's the whole thing the four corners she's the whole thing okay She completes it. She's the whole. At absolute zero. Absolute zero is the same thing as singularity. And I'm going to tell you how. At absolute zero, you are totally disconnected from God, from your memory of who you were. It's your forgetting It's no conscience. It's no affect. It's complete oblivion. Okay? Zero. Neuter. Neutrality, neuter, indifference, nothing. No cause, no effect, no motion, no growth, nothing. Sitting perpetually in the present moment without any knowledge or wisdom, without any drive or purpose. Okay? Singularity is the same thing. I know that we talk about becoming one with a God, the united whole, the one. Okay, but listen to what singularity is. Singularity is also living in oblivion. If you are one, you can't know another. If you are happy, Perpetually, you cannot know sadness. If you are without awareness of anything else, you cannot know yourself. You have to know others to define, be able to define yourself. Right? Okay. Singularity 
is that state of oneness. It is the oblivion. It's not knowing. This is why God did not remain one, but needed to explode in the Big Bang. He did not remain zero. He did not remain one. Without another, you cannot encounter You cannot count. No count. No count. You do not count. No count means zero. You cannot encounter anything else. This is your countenance. This is encounter. This is what does encounter mean? It means to meet. Adam had no help meet, encounter. This is why God created Eve to be a help meet. He had to encounter somebody else. He had to recognize that he could have a cause and effect. He had to know his wife, which is intercourse with her. He had to connect, intersect, meet, and encounter her. Why? Under the definition of the word help meet is the word encounter. Okay, what does it mean? It meant to establish him. To, literally, it's to define him. To proclaim, to declare, to give him word, to publish him. These, this is what the word encounter means. This is the freaking safar. It's word, but it means to count. An account, to recount a story, to give words, to count it it made him count it made him count she published his word right he could not connect the dots without his help meet you have to be able to encounter something outside of yourself otherwise you are not established you are not declared you are not proclaimed you are not word You are not numbered. You are not counted. You are at zero. He needed a help meet. And so, we are not zero now, and we are not one. I understand so far that absolute zero and singularity are at the opening of the black hole. It's the event horizon. We are not that. We are not binary. It is the idea of neutrality, masculinity, femininity, and the idea of none of those at the same time. Okay. It's like Trinity being one But it's a little bit more profound than that, okay? So, I can't tell you (laughs) the beauty of these understandings because there are three major points here that came together for me through 
language and knowing what each word meant and studying each concept deeply for years. So guys, it's a beautiful thing. And I don't, I'm sure there's much more beyond. Okay. But in this, there is the black hole and the white hole and the wormhole. There is proton, neutron, and electron. There is um, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There is mind, body, soul. There is so much in this understanding, okay? And it's something we're going to have to talk about in the future and think about more. But if you could go back and rewatch, it's about countenance. She gives the whole aspect. She is the four corners put together as the X. And she's the whole, she's the heel, but she's, she's not she, and she's not he, and she's not neither. You know, it's so complex. Okay. But she is the ability to have the rounded out affect, every affect in between the bliss and the anger, the love and the fear. And it's the ability to have everything in between. And what I'm hearing right now, it's the ability to have every integer never touching. Okay, I'm seeing if zero is one end of the spectrum and one is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. I'm seeing that there's an infinite number of integers in between the two. And that's what the wholeness is. That's something that we are. Infinite. Infinite possibilities. And it's by having the established three. That's what the threes are. I'm hearing right now, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Okay, Jesus. He was not saying he's the beginning and the end. He was saying that this is combined. Okay? They cannot be separate from each other. It's as if there is no beginning and end. There is no beginning and end when you combine the two. It's a really, really deep concept because I, I'm seeing this whole open up. And that's a play on words. It's W-H-O-L-E. It's a whole opening up. That's what it is. Beginning and the end together as one. Not two opposite ends of the spectrum because there is no such. We are eternal and we are infinite. And there's something deep about this. So, so interesting, guys. I am very excited about where we're going. Thank you so much for listening. I will see you in the next video.